so let's take a look uh, at this friendly little elephant of yours who's going to be kind of a, a case study in how we can use some of these procedural textures. Um, yeah, let me just uh, select all the objects in here and have a look at all the shaders that I used for this guy. Um, so I used you know, pretty much all of the materials I was just talking about uh, on this guy, and you know, I didn't go too crazy, you know, adding ripples or, or making it more complex. I really just used the textures as they were out of the box and just you know remapped them a little bit, and you know, just tried to to work them in to add a little bit of depth and subtlety to the surface. Uh, I used um, so these balls here are the uh, the volume noise, and I didn't we didn't really talk about the volume noise much, but volume noise is basically made of balls, and it's like you have like one layer of of balls, and then they're the like as you add depth, it adds more layers of balls that are, um, you know, smaller it's, and scaled down more. So it's like, uh, you know, if you, if you want it to render fast, you keep object the depth kind of at, swimming. at one. So y your object is sort of s is, is sitting or swimming uh, in a sea of small or large little spheres, almost. Exactly. And they're really, you know, precise little spheres, actually. You can... Uh, you can actually go in, and I've done this before, it's like you can isolate one ball and use that as a spherical ramp, because it's like you can't otherwise make a spherical ramp, and sometimes uh, those can mm -hmm. be really useful, especially for sort of ambient, different kinds of ambient lighting techniques. Mm. Um, you know, it's like sort of, you know, it's like kind of a fast, cheap hack, but you can get really nice results out of it. You can get like fake subsurface scattering, or just like sort of a nice, it's like a nice way to sort of diffuse light through a surface, or like mm. through, through a room, <coughs> that kind of thing. Um, I guess, uh, uh, so for the floor, you know, it's like I wanted to break up the reflection a little bit. I didn't want it to be dirty, you know, I wanted it to be like pretty much a nice clean floor, but you know, no surface in reality is really going to be perfect. It's like there's going to be ripples and bumps and, you know, it's like the highlights are going to be broken up. So I basically used a fractal noise to break up the highlights in this floor. And I, I just use a checker um, here so it was a little bit more apparent how that was working. Uh, mm -hmm. The floor is uh, is reflective, but it's very subtly reflective. So it's like a lot of you know the reflection that you see of the elephant is actually uh, just sort of blocking the reflection that's coming from the light from the environment. Um, so um, the fractal on the floor is that mapped to the specularity, or is that mapped to the reflectivity? That is mapped to the uh, specularity. I'm not actually using reflectivity at all in this one. So it's like... Oh, okay, I see. And, you know, the differences... I mean, they're the same thing um, in Arnold. It's just that specularity allows you to add roughness, whereas, you know, reflectivity is, is strictly sharp. And, uh, right. You know, that's, like, kind of a key thing with, like, how you can sort of optimize Arnold renders is by separating those two things out. Um, and then, I guess, uh, you know, quickly, one thing that, that's sort of interesting to note is... Uh, this is kind of a subtle thing. I'm not sure how how well this will come across uh, with the video, but um, on this surface, the bumps are going out, and on this mm. surface, the bumps are going in, and that's because the normals on the ear are actually inverted. So that that's a mistake. You know, it's like that's something that I would go back if I wanted to be anal about it and, that, and flip the normals on the ear, so right. that the uh, so that the balls are pointing outwards instead of inwards. Um, but you know, that's like super subtle thing, you know, in this case, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, so, so that's pretty much, you know, it's like I'm using that, the, the volume noise for, um, for a roughness map and for a bump map. So it's like the, uh, the balls are, you know, it's like the reflection is actually brighter in the area where it's, it's bumpier as well.